They're off. Sentinel 2C and Vega are blazing a trail across the equatorial skies here over Europe's spaceport in French Guiana, heading north out over the Atlantic towards the Caribbean islands, burning the first three stages. The first stage, of course, burning now, getting us away from the gravity of the Earth. Vega really shoots into the sky, Damien, doesn't she? Yeah, it does, it does, and we could feel the rumble tumble here in the commentary cabin. So um, the P-80 delivers a powerful thrust, thrust about 230 tons, equivalent to twice, twice its weight. Uh, it just results in a very rapid acceleration. Um, so the first stage, uh, its mass in propellants is uh, 89 tons, and it is made of a special material called uh, filament wound carbon epoxy. And we're looking here at fantastic images um, <clears throat> and separation there of the P-80 first stage and switch on of the second stage, the Z-23. So at this point in time, we've lost about two thirds of our weight. And we're hearing that the propulsion is nominal. So, and the trajectory is nominal. And of course, the idea is to get rid of mass when it's no longer needed. As soon as each solid stage has used its propellant, yes, we jettison it. Uh, so that's why we split a rocket into different stages to avoid dragging unnecessary mass into space. And we're burning the Z-23 second stage, Z for Zephyro, which is a type of wind, a gentle and favorable west wind. It is often associated with uh, bringing spread and good weather. Uh, it very much aligns with the goal of the Vega launcher, which aims at providing reliable and efficient access to space. So, uh, Katie, it's a poetic note to the idea of a smooth and successful journey. And the fairing at the front of the rocket there, you can see Sentinel 2C inside. And uh, we're getting uh, news there that the end of the, coming towards the end of the um, burning of the Z-23. Our uh, altitude there on the uh, top right-hand side, 113 kilometers above the Earth. And uh, bottom, the Vitesse is our speed, traveling at nearly four kilometers per second. So, separation there of the second stage and uh, there's a, a short delay before we then get the ignition of the third stage that's to avoid any collisions up in space absolutely so and we have separation now of the fairing that's been jettisoned we don't need it anymore and if you look at the altitude we're 130 kilometers above earth we're hearing that the propulsion is nominal and so is the trajectory everything going according to plan and we can see sentinel 2c damien for the first time it's that gold structure at the front yes so we can see the 3.4 meter long satellite mm -hmm. attached to the avum upper stage so the gold part is a thermal insulation. It was uh, specifically uh, designed in the 50s to protect satellites from the extreme temperatures in space. And since then, it has been, de it has been developed for all kinds of uses here on Earth. Uh, that includes emergency blankets, uh, like the one you might have in your car. <laughs> well, I don't actually have one in my car, but I know the ones you mean. They're very crinkly yeah. and noisy. Um, and you can see there we've lifted off from the Guiana Space Center. The Galio was the tracking station here, and now we're using San Jean du Maroni. And if you look at the uh, picture there, you can see that the, there's just one solar panel today. Yes, uh, it is to maximize reliability and efficiency while meeting the satellite's power requirements. So satellites must be as lightweight as possible, as you know, and every kilo counts, every little helps. And so note the speed, uh, the speed should go just a bit under eight kilometers per second. So we are heading toward that. And everything is going according to plan. Everything is nominal. Um, these images on the right-hand side 
or the computer-generated images. They're uh, kind of a 3D animation of uh, what's been planned right now in space, and they're pretty well as close as we can get to real-time imagery, aren't they? Yes, so our uh, mission analysis uh, teams plan a precise set of events, and we put that in uh, a computer, uh, and it shows us the behavior that they have predicted, uh, that including or orientation with respect to the Earth and the Sun. We put a lot of effort into it to make it true to life. The satellite is modeled from uh, 3D uh, plans, obviously. For the textures of the different parts of the satellite, we use uh, photos to try and reproduce how they really look like. For instance, the thermal insulation that we just mentioned. And they have, it's really useful to have those images because, of course, the problem with space is that it's in space, so you actually can't see what's happening. Getting close now to separation, there we go, of the third stage. That's uh, been confirmed. And so we've got away from Earth in six and a half minutes. This is the... Um, speed, of course, that we're traveling, eight, nearly, well, seven and a half coming up to kilometers per second. So we can really start the next phase of the flight now, Damien. Our flight path takes us up north. Um, we're heading up over the Caribbean towards the east coast of Canada. We're uh, crossing the Arctic and back down over Southeast Asia to the west coast of Australia. And that's where we're going to be releasing our satellite. Uh, why north? So the satellite will be in a fixed position over the Earth, north to south, with the Earth rotating below it. Imagine, Katie, you're appealing an orange stripe by stripe. I'm just going to uh, stop you there. We've had confirmation of acquisition of signal at Bermuda. So yes, stripe by stripe. Yes. Um, so uh, the Sentinel-2 peel very wide stripes. Each wave is nearly 300 kilometers, so they can image our entire planet in five days. Amazing. And we've got uh, the switch on time. Now, this is the scheduled moment to switch on the engine of the Avum upper stage. We have that confirmed. Uh, this is an important moment, actually, in the flight. Trajectory is nominal, we're hearing. We've really started the next phase now of this part of the journey. Because